Okay, this um, second video, um, I'm going to touch on something I actually did not show in the first video, and that was how I made these little symbols. Thought it would be useful just to show you, you know, again, kind of the power of PowerPoint to just, you know, use some basic objects or basic, you know, um, shapes and, and build things by just kind of, um, you know, stringing them together or duplicating or, you know, just kind of layering on top. This is a pretty common um I guess a common common concept for any kind of uh, digital uh, design or digital artwork, you know, you would layer various um, objects on top of each other and group them together, perhaps. So in, in our situation, it's very simple because we're doing, um, you know, one line diagrams and some basic uh, basic symbols, which are usually involved in just the, you know, basic shapes and lines. So um, so life's fairly easy for us um, to do. So let's take, for instance, um, again, I was talking about the gate valve in the last um, in the last video, how we kind of went about making this gate valve, uh, or perhaps we'll even take the solenoid valve. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to go ahead and copy this solenoid valve. I'm going to bring it down to this blank page, and we'll just paste it on here. All right. So that's kind of what we want to end up with, right? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to maybe help see this. Again, like I said in the last video, I, this is nothing more than a bunch of objects that are grouped together. So I have, I'll do an ungroup and you'll see here that I, um, I had another group. I had to group the valve symbol, uh, as well earlier. So the valve symbol is nothing more than a, um, a triangle and a duplicate triangle that was just turned 180 degrees, um, a line, which was kind of stuck to that triangle there and in a box with a letter in the middle of it. So let's make this from scratch just to show you how, you know, how how easy it is. So going up to the shapes again, I, I'm gonna choose shapes and I'm gonna choose of course triangle to start and we'll just draw a triangle, all right? And you, so once I get my triangle drawn, I can of course grab it and stretch it and make it as, as little or big as I would like to do. Of course, uh, again, the fault colors are blue. Um, so I want to do a couple of things. I want to go ahead and uh, make the internal color white. And I want to make my outline color black, right? Since we're going to kind of use like a black convention, black ink convention here. And then if I wanted to, I can grab that kind of circ that uh, kind of um, circular arrow there. And I can rotate this triangle uh into any position that i like now i have the grid lines turned on you're you're you may not have the grid lines turned on in your powerpoint but if you come here to view uh you can choose grid lines and ruler and that always helps um it definitely helps you maybe kind of helping snap things to the grid line or at least get things lined up to the grid line. they don't necessarily snap to the grid line now since i've created one triangle i want to go ahead and duplicate this triangle and I can uh, right click and uh, I could do a copy paste as well, right? Uh, another kind of Windows trick is I can do a control D and a control D is a duplicate. So just by highlighting that item, control D, I, I duplicate it. And then of course I would like to spin this guy around and then kind of line it up. And then, like I said before, right, I kind of highlight both items, right click, and I'm going to group these two items together. So now this is one entity that I can kind of drag around. So one thing to be careful about when you group things is that if I wanted to resize it now, um, sometimes grouped objects don't stretch very well. These two actually behaved um, nicely when I just did the stretching. So I could actually grow these or shrink them depending on how I want it to be scaled in my drawing. But once I added the, uh, the solenoid box and the letter in that box, uh, this may not stretch very well. So try to at least get it into as close to uh, the size you'd like to have it. So the, to finish off the, uh, the symbol for the solenoid, we would just uh, need to draw uh, a square, kind of a square box. And again, we can resize this box. Now you notice the 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 red lines are showing me that one I'm uh, 
I'm centered with the object below it. And then I'm also uh, happen to be on some kind of reference line above. Um, so I want to be more centered is what I'm more worried about. So I'm going to keep it just, just like that. I'm going to fill it with the white and I'm going to make the outline black. And then I got to do two things to kind of finish this object. One is we need to draw a connecting line from the uh, box down to the valve. And once again, we'll make that black. And then the last thing is I want to add a letter into this box. So I'm just going to choose a text box. And I'm going to come in here and I will type in capital S. Now you say, what happened to the letter? Oops, I'll move that in a second. It's there. Apparently it was in white ink. Now I'll just kind of bring that back into alignment. And if I wanted to, I can highlight that. I can bold it. I can make it bigger. And I can even change its font if I don't want Arial. I have Arial defaulted here. But I can choose some different font if I wish uh, to display. And then the last thing to do again is now to group this entire object together. So I highlight it all and I say group. So now I have one entity that I can copy, paste, duplicate, and use throughout my, my drawing. So the last thing to note here was like we were saying a minute ago is you cannot stretch it now. So now if I try to stretch this, you'll see that maybe it doesn't quite behave uh, mainly when we get smaller, but actually it is still actually working well. So so, um, so this, this particular object kind of stretches, does stretch well. So the other thing I uh, you saw I had created were just some basic contacts and, and, uh, and coils. So these were fairly simple, right? I drew a circle. And then I drew two smaller circles to kind of show like the connection points. And then I just drew a line um, going behind there. So that's another kind of little secret of, uh, of PowerPoint that, that I haven't really shown you is that if I drew a circle, and then if I made it white and I made a black outline, if I were to take a line now, and draw through that box. All right, if I kind of go ahead and try to get it centered, you'll see that the line is in front of the circle. So I can actually right click on this circle and I could say bring to the front. And when I do that, the line is now invisible or blanked out because the circle's on top. So now when I'm drawing my ladder diagrams, I can draw lines right through these objects and not have to worry about um, necessarily stopping a line and then restarting a line. Um, I can just kind of go right through if I'm using uh, the fill, it'll be white and then bring the object to the front or move the line to the back. So again, that's always a right click. So you can say move to the front, right click, send to the back. You can also, um, bring forward. So what that would do is bring it forward one layer. So, you, you know, so the other things could be, um, other things might still be on top of it, but you can bring it forward on la one layer and perhaps it'll um, go through the circle, but not go through a second circle over here. Um, other objects we created were uh, simple contacts. So in simple contacts, I just basically drew two lines that were kind of parallel to each other and then the connecting circles for the connecting points and then little lines to get between these circles and the uh, contacts. And then for the normal close, I just drew a, a diagonal line through there. So that would look something like this, very simple. I draw one line. Of course, I could do my control D. Sorry, control D this time, not shift. Control D, right? So now I got my two contacts. And then I can uh, go ahead and draw a third line that would show it as a normal closed contact. And then I can, um, you know, just draw, connect, you know, draw lines off to the side to show it as, um, as a contact. All right. And then when I'm happy with this, I can right click and group. Now, 
it's all blue and I didn't change the colors. But now that it's highlighted as a grouped object, I can choose shape outline and it does turn it to black. So that does save me a few minutes there as well. All right, so that's basically how to create the simple objects by just drawing various shapes, maybe uh, orienting them differently, pairing them together, and, um, and then grouping them to make little objects. And all these items can, can of course be ungrouped. Any of these items you see here could be ungrouped and, um, and you can you know, go about editing them yourself if you wanted to. The exception is these two hopper, the hopper and the roaster. These are actually just shapes I grabbed right from the shape library. So if you scroll down a bit, there were some flowchart symbols. So uh, there was, well, I grabbed that one for the hopper because it kind of looked like a hopper. And then for the roaster, I grabbed this one here because it looked kind of like the roaster looked in the drawing. Um, but as you can see, there's all kinds of various shapes we can choose. We can take rectangles and uh, rounded rectangles and, and rectangles with a notched corner, um, kind of a, uh, a pentagon shape um and then uh various things so so as we draw our pid p and id diagrams we could, we could probably find the shape close enough in here to match uh, what we want to try to do all right um and that'll conclude this video